mga Kajivikers and Camillers, welcome again to my vlog. Today, the group 5 Millers will elaborate the concept of audience so as identify, explain, and evaluate the various theories of audience receptions. So please check this out. Hey guys, good evening. So we are the group number five and welcome to our vlog number seven. Okay, so for this vlog, we're gonna be talking about the different types of audiences. We're gonna be elaborating, we're gonna identify, we're gonna explain, and even tackle the different theories of the audiences and so on. And not only that, we're gonna be citing examples and concrete sites of everyday life of an audience. And ultimately, our goal for the end of this vlog, our goal is to identify the audience and to cater to our reception and desires and even appeal on how we do to the audiences. So um, let's get started with the vlog and my group mates will further explain about it. Let's go. The first conclusion for our PowerPoint presentation will be about the notion of the audience. The question asked here is, how can we define the word audience? This question can simply be answered in four different ways. So yeah, let's get straight to it. The first answer for this question can be any group of people exposed to media, which means people that use social media like us. The second answer can be physically present in the media event which are the people who are in the said media event in real life, such as if they're in a concert. Then the third answer can be not present at the media event, which is the complete opposite of the previous answer I just gave. But this time, the audiences can be able to watch the media event through media. Like if they're not able to be in that said concert, then they can just watch it live through YouTube. And then lastly, it can be answered, it is unnecessary for the audience member to experience the same event at the same time. Which means if the audience already experienced the media event, it is not necessary for them to experience the same thing. Like, if they already went to the concert they watched, and they decided to watch it again, then it is not really necessary for them. It is depending on their choice. So yeah, this is the first conclusion of our PowerPoint presentation. Again, I'm going to be talking about target audience and audience segmentation. Right? So, target audience is a particular group at which a product such as a film or advertisement is aimed at. A specific group of people you want to reach with your social channels. They're the people who are most likely to be interested in your contents, products, or services. They are likely united by some characteristics like demographics and behaviors. You're the ones that are identified to be your aimed audience that you want to appeal to. This can be based on their demographics such as age, job title, income level, education, location, or behavior. The target audience consists of the people who are most likely to be interested in a certain topic or concept. Audience Segmentation Based on identifying subgroups within the target audience in order to deliver more tailored messaging for stronger connections. Psychographics come into play when you have access to insights about your audience, personality types, values, attitudes, and beliefs. Example of this is noontime show audiences come together vicariously. They clap, sing, wave their hands, and sometimes be part of the contest. That's all. Thank you. Television. Television, in the domestic setting towards audiences, can also interact by phone and features embedded in the format of a TV show or the series we watch. 
and telecommunication companies have introduced text messaging wherein the viewer can participate but will be charged with a certain amount in responding to a question or voting for a contestant. Let's say political figures using television to communicate with the audience to rally them or disperse information in order to get votes. Television is a part of mass communication, wherein billions of people are tuned in television programs, series, whether free or cable. These programs give people or audiences the opportunity to relay information, to get information and knowledge. Now, television has various characteristics, such as it gives us the comfort of our home, it, you're able to engage, but you are quite limited due to your only engagement with other people would be let's say the text messaging as i said earlier from telecommunication companies that's the engagement through front features and the television screen now television it disperses every media message media form or media text whether it is printed advertisement it is prominently passed through television shows or series that we watch in on an everyday basis these are representations of how reality is perceived by its creators and producers rendered into codes and conventions readable to the audience. Now, the television has the ability to reach a wide array of audiences, audience, hence mass communication. We are part of the mass audience even though we are separated from other members of the mass through space and time, but we are still able to interact with one another through the voting systems, the text messaging from telecommunication companies, but we are able to interact with that, but not in the physical aspect of it. Now, the level of activity and engagement with the media information is very limited when it comes to television. It's very limited to our screens, to text messaging, and so on and so forth. And other characteristics will be talked by David. So today, for my topic, I'll be talking about audience response. So audience response is a type of interaction associated with the use of audience response system to create an inter interactivity between a presenter and his and her audience. Combine wireless hardware with presentation software and system for remote audience may use telephones or web poles for audience watching through televisions or the internet. Various names are used for this technology including real-time response, the worm, dial testing, the audience response meter, and and more other <coughs> and other uses. In educational settings, such systems are often called student response system or personal response system. The handheld remote control that students use to convey their response to question is often called the clicker. More recent entrants into the market do not require social hardware. However, there are commercial and open source cloud-based tools that are allowed to allow responses from the audience using range and personal computing devices such as cell phones, smartphones, and laptops. That's all for my report and we'll go to the next report. Hi, my name is Rain and I will be taking over for Jesus' topic, which is the differences between audiences of the different media. So continuing from where she left off, we have the difference of the level of interaction with fellow audiences, the location and space occupied, the amount of time devoted to watching or viewing, and the accessibility and the proximity. For example would be the difference between audiences when it comes to the domestic setting and inside the cinema. In a domestic setting, the audience feel relaxed and may even get interrupted by different house chores, phone calls, or even visitors. The audience in the domestic setting can share their opinion and insights once they are before a TV screen. And while the audience in the cinema, however, they behave differently, like unlike the domestic setting, because they remain seated in the darkness of a theater. Hello, so I'll be talking about the final conclusion on our cinematic setting. So first of all, in cinematic setting, we would have less negative feedback, which means when, when we stop sending people messages that, we, that they do not want, 
they are most less likely to to annoy us to the point of the complaint. Second one is increased rates of response, which means people are more willing to respond to something if it if it means it is relevant to their interests. And third is decreased marketing expenditures, and it's which which means when we know our target audience, we do not need to waste time and money marketing to those outside the group. And the last two will be talk to Oliver. Hey guys, so today I will be discussing to you the last few parts of our cinematic setting. So, the first one for the last few parts is the decreased long-term cost. So, audience segmentation also saves money by decreasing the amount on time spent following up on less qualified leads. And the last one for the cinematic setting is higher rates of conversion. By providing your customers with relevant purchasing information, you are more likely to close. So, that is for the cinematic setting. Thank you for watching guys. Bye! Hey guys! So, that's it for our vlog. I hope my groupmates have uh, made you understood even more about the word audiences. I hope that you guys even understood when we elaborated, when we identified, and we even gave different types and classifications of an audience. So we also hope that the word audience, next time you hear it, you would think, you would know what's the true meaning behind it, what's the actual type of people that they are, and so on. And uh, hopefully we reach our goal of explaining to you guys about the word of audience. So that's it for our vlog. We are the group number five and thank you for watching our vlog number seven. Thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye. There you go mga ka GVkers and ka mailers. You heard the different point of views of the group five mailers. So if you want also to share your thoughts and opinions, please comment down below and please ring the notification bell for you to be updated for my new videos. And don't forget to subscribe because as I usually say, subscribe now, laugh, and learn later. Once again, ito po ang inyong gurong vlogger ng Kuwait nagsasabing, God bless you all and always keep safe. Maraming maraming salamat po.